Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with uh, the new chapter, which is packet classification. Ah, by, inc by incidentally, all the material uh, regarding uh, IP address lookup <coughs> and uh, packet classification can be found on the book of Jonathan Chow that you can download. On, but while uh, <coughs> the part on uh, um, switching was uh, is referred to the, uh, the other book by Pattavina. <coughs> Packet classification is uh, uh, an operation which is uh, uh, carried out by certain uh, routers, uh, not necessarily all, uh, and it's more complicated than uh, uh, IP address lookup because it allows to perform uh, more advanced and uh, different uh, functions, like for example admission control, resource reservation, uh, scheduling, uh, queuing per, per flow and so on. And uh, it's based on the ability to, of uh, classifying the packets uh, in order that uh, each packet can be uh, related to a specific flow. The flow is uh, an entity which is, uh, as generically speaking, a sequence of packets. And uh, each uh, router uh, that is performing packet classification is notified that a certain flow will be active by filling a specific entry on a on a table, and similarly to what we have seen for IP address lookup. And uh, as you know, uh, this is also the basis of uh, uh, open flow, which is uh, the most uh, common and known uh, uh, way to implement uh, software-defined networking. And uh, we have seen that uh, the open flow switches are basically uh, devices with a packet classification table, which is called in that case a flow table, and uh, they, are perf they perform packet classification and then perform specific actions on, on each packet, which depend on the, cl the classification result. So the flows are specified by the by rules, and uh, each rule uh, consists of a uh, uh, yeah, a set of information which allows us uh, to uh, compare a set of values with uh, the values so that are carried by the, the packet inside the header on specific fields of the header. And uh, the set of rule is uh, called a uh, classifier. So the classifier also tells uh, uh, not only how to classify the packet, but also what action to apply to, uh, to, to each packet. And this is an example, uh, a classifier that uh, is uh, in, inside uh, this router, uh, which is called R2. No. Uh, in, <clears throat> as you can see, in, in this router, you, you have uh, uh, three rules that are uh, written in the classifier. Um, no, sorry, this R2 refers to the rule, but the router is this one. And uh, the first rule, for example, tells that uh, each packet uh, that is uh, uh, destined to this uh, destination address, and um, uh, which also has uh, uh, a cert uh, which also is carried in the payload a TCP segment, and uh, uh, for which the port, uh, the destination port, is the well-known port of the Telnet uh, application. This packet has to be stopped. So this is a way to perform a packet filtering. For example, uh, uh, in this case, this router uh, acts also like a, a, a firewall. And uh, so all the packets that arise to the router and that they are going this way, and uh, also that uh, complies to these to our further rules, are discarded. The second rule is a, a routing uh, rule, and you can have here, uh, uh, basically the action is sent to a certain port, which means uh, route the packet towards a certain uh, next stop, in this case the port is this one, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, it's uh, uh, based on the destination address, but also on the source address, which is something quite different from uh, 
what we have seen in the IP uh, lookup, the simple IP lookup. And here you have also the, um, the protocol, so it also it only applies to packet carrying UDP segments and also this, uh, with, a certain, uh, with a certain application. And uh, the last one is uh, uh, traffic policing rule. Uh, in the actions, uh, we can uh, perform uh, packet uh, discarding, packet forwarding, but also uh, these kind of uh, checks that uh, uh, tends to discard the packet only if the measured rate for this specific flow is greater than a certain threshold. So you can also uh, uh, enforce uh, policy rules. So the packet uh, classifier is uh, uh, a, a table that is uh, <coughs> uh, inside uh, the, the router. Uh, you have uh, uh, one part of the table, which is uh, the part containing rules. And uh, we can say that uh, is each uh, entry of this uh, table uh, corresponds to a rule, which we can uh, uh, indicate with uh, R sub J. And uh, each R sub J is uh, a, a actually a regular expression uh, that is uh, um, that contains uh, a set of uh, uh, parameters, and uh, the number of parameters contained in, in uh, the rule, uh, which can go until uh, a maximum uh, D, is the uh, dimension of the classifier. So the classifier is operating in uh, d, d dimensions, which are, and the d is the maximum number of uh, fields that can be identified when we are uh, considering, where we are classifying a packet. For each of these fields, there is a, 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 a parameter in Rj, which is a regular expression. Then we have uh, a priority which is uh, uh, associated to each rule and uh, finally an action the action of rj uh, why we need priorities because uh, in this case we cannot uh, uh, exploit uh, the criteria when we will have a, a packet that is matching more than one rule like in the case of a ap uh, address lookup there is no uh, in IP address lookup, we had the longest prefix matching, but here we have many fields, so you cannot, uh, uh, the longest prefix matching would make no sense. So the incoming packet has a, a header which contains uh, at least D fields, and uh, when uh, the packet is uh, checked against all the rules, uh, it means that uh, for each entry of the, of the classifier, uh, the, the router has to take all the D fields of the incoming packet and match them field by field with uh, the regular expressions that are contained in uh, rule J. And uh, the rule is matching only if uh, we ha you have matching on all the fields. So uh, when uh, you have the incoming packet, uh, you have a d-tuple of uh, values that have to be matched with uh, uh, the classifiers in a d-dimensional uh, uh, matching operation. And then once we find uh, all the rules that are matching with the incoming packet, we have to uh, decide what is the winning rule of this set. And this is decided according to the highest priority. So the, finally, uh, the classifying operation is an operation where we have to uh, find the highest priority rule, which is matching with an incoming packet. Uh, this is another example of a, a, a routing table, which is similar to the previous one. And uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, five... Uh, uh, five parameters for each rule. So the dimension of this classifier is uh, five. And uh, you can see also how the rules can be uh, 
uh, written which format and for example uh, according to the type of, uh, um, of field that we are considering there will be different formats uh, for instance if you are taking the uh, IP address uh, destination or source IP address you know that the IP address is expressed in a format of uh, a 32-bit uh, word and inside the classifier rules for these IP uh, addresses will have the form that we have already seen in the IP address lookup. So they will contain prefixes and the prefix means that you have to match the incoming packet each time you have uh, this uh, regular expression against a number only matching the two numbers until the bit that is indicated here as the uh, extension of the mask of the prefix so the net mask basically so in this case for example you have to check only until the bit number 16 and uh, the wildcard indicates any possible value. So it is always uh, uh, when you have a wildcard, uh, this specific uh, regular expression is matching with any possible value of that specific field. For uh, the other prefixes, you cannot use uh, this kind of format. And uh, for, for instance, uh, protocols uh, uh, or uh, uh, ports are numbers. And uh, so um, you have uh, protocols are indicated by a code and ports are indicated by a number and uh, so you have uh, the exact matching so, uh, the incoming packet is matching with uh, a rule only if you have uh, exact matching <coughs> um, and the same is for the application on a layer protocol but in some cases you can specify in this kind of fields uh, not only uh, specific values but also ranges or intervals for example uh, you can uh, specify you could specify uh, port number equal to 23 or port number included in uh, 200 the interval between 256 and 100, 1023 which is uh, the interval of the well-known numbers port numbers or greater than 120 uh, 1023 and so on. and so here you can uh, do something more with the regular expressions that uh, uh, what we are used uh, with uh, we have been used to so far and then uh, usually in a, a classifier table you should always uh, define a, a no matching entry which is uh, uh, basically the entry with all wildcards for all the fields uh, and which is matching all the packets but you will have to give the, the lowest possible priority and uh, so the, the meaning is uh, if a packet is not matching with anything else then perform this action that corresponds to the default action uh, that usually as you know in uh, uh, OpenFlow should be send the packet to the controller because I don't know uh, I don't know anything about uh, uh, this specific packet. And for example, because there is no flow that has been uh, already set that is uh, matching this packet. So the set of uh, uh, rules have uh, uh, regular expressions. So each rule have a, a set of regular expressions and uh, we can call uh, R sub J with uh, uh, this other index I, uh, the specific regular expression for rule J for dimension I. And uh, you will have, uh, again, a D tuple of values from uh, 1 to uh, D. This is another example of a classifier where you have also the intervals. And for instance, uh, here for uh, the field F3, you have uh, uh, possible in the second rule, you have uh, the possibility matching if uh, the value is 4 or 8, uh, or in the interval between 4 and 8. And here uh, in the interval between 10 and 12, and so on. 
So the seven rules are also sorted in uh, descending priority. Uh, so this is uh, the highest priority one, this is the lowest priority one. These are the fields that are specified in the format of prefixes. And uh, these are the fields that are specified in the format of uh, single values or value intervals. And uh, when uh, you are uh, performing or uh, building up the, the classifier, you should also take into account what are the formats of the fields. So there are some techniques that are better suited for uh, this kind of uh, formats. Uh, other techniques that are that works uh, with these other and other techniques that are more general that works with both. Okay. The, the performance metrics for uh, uh, packet classification are very similar to what we have seen in, in uh, for the IP address lookup. Uh, first of all, you have the search speed. <coughs> so if you uh, take packets from a, a, a high-speed link, for example, at 10 gigabit per second. And we know already that uh, the average size of the IP packets is uh, 40 byte. <coughs> this means uh, you get uh, uh, 31 million packets per second. And so you will have to make 31 classifications, packet classifications per second, if you want to keep up with the speed of the lines. Uh, this means that for each classification you have only 32 nanoseconds. And then the storage requirements is also important. So how you represent the classifier, the table, in an internal structure that uh, is uh, the support structure of uh, data structure of the uh, algorithm you have used. And uh, this uh, always, uh, as we have seen in uh, in uh, IP address lookup have uh, an impact on the amount of memory. So there are typically uh, techniques uh, or algorithm which requires, uh, uh, which maybe takes less uh, uh, time in the classification operation, but requires larger memory and the other way around. So usually there is a trade-off between these two uh, things. Then there, are, there is also the scalability, how many entries you can uh, uh, accept uh, in your uh, technique. And uh, for example, in Metro, or, uh, in, in metro Edge uh, routers, uh, the number of entries in the classification table is uh, quite uh, substantial from uh, 128,000 uh, uh, to 1 million, which is quite a lot. Scalability number of uh, header fields. This is uh, very important. As we will see, all the techniques tend to uh, increase complexity uh, when you increase the, the dimensions of the problem, which is quite obvious. And uh, some techniques are quite rapidly increasing complexity. Basically, they are increasing complexity in an exponential way uh, as a function of the number of dimensions. And then there is also update time. Some uh, applications require a fast uh, uh, updating rule uh, time, rule updating time. Uh, flexibility in specifications, as we have already mentioned. Uh, there are some uh, rules that are specified in uh, a format, and other rules are specified in another format, and uh, techniques uh, <coughs> uh, of um, uh, packet classification have to match with the, the rule that you are considering. Uh, the uh, simplest way to perform packet classification is, of course, the linear search. So the simplest algorithm is just to take uh, the incoming packet and the, the header and extract the fields, the value of the fields, start matching uh, the value of the fields for, with uh, one entry after the other in the classifier table. Maybe you have already uh, ordered or uh, sorted uh, the uh, rules according to the priority, which gives you some advantage. But uh, uh, this operation of linear search is always uh, a big O of N. So it means that it, the, the time, the lookup time, the classification time, 
uh, increase linearly with the size of the uh, classification rule in terms of number of entries. So um, this is not uh, the most efficient way. And uh, so there, there is a lot of there are a lot of uh, um, techniques that have been proposed, uh, which uh, allows you to decrease the complexity and accelerate classification time. And this is the full menu that you find in the book. We will not look at all these techniques because it would take too much time. We will only uh, look at the subset, uh, we, which is also containing the simplest te techniques because some techniques are very much uh, complicated. And uh, uh, more precisely, we will look at uh, the tri-base classification uh, which is an extension of the tri uh, based technique we have already seen with uh, IP address lookup. We will look at the geometric algorithm. We will skip the heuristic. We, you can uh, look at uh, them uh, yourself, but uh, we don't have time to go into the heuristic. And uh, we fi uh, finish with the TCAM based uh, algorithm. So this is basically the main. So this morning, we can start uh, looking inside the tri-based classification techniques. And um, because they are quite simple, or at least familiar uh, to you, because uh, as I said, it, they are an extension of the um, uh, IP address lookup based on uh, the tries, which can be regarded as a one dimension uh, hierarchical try uh, technique. Uh, so now we are considering the extension to multiple dimensions. And um, so you, we know that each dimension represents a field. And uh, uh, so we have to uh, construct a data structure, uh, which is, of course, more complicated than the, the one dimension case and uh, that is able to capture the fact that you have more fields to, uh, in, to investigate. Uh, this uh, specific algorithm is uh, very much suited for the fields that can be expressed in terms of uh, prefixes, so in the format of uh, prefixes, because it's based on the try, which is uh, uh, basically uh, suited for when you have uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, specifications of the field. So prefix means, uh, again, uh, you have to check the incoming uh, packet and the corresponding field with uh, what is uh, written in the rule, uh, in the rule table, uh, considering only the first uh, bits of uh, a binary number. So this is a hierarchical tie, so it means that we have to build a hierarchy of trees. And so it, it, the, the construction is made like this. So we have to consider uh, all the fields for classification. Uh, and we start with the third field. So we focus only on the first uh, field. Let's call it uh, F1. Okay. So, uh, as you know, for each entry of the classifier, we have a regular expression, which is uh, Rj. We have, since we are considering only field number one, we have to take the first uh, value of this uh, set of uh, values that corresponds to uh, entry Rj. So we have to, cons to consider the regular expression Rj sub one, R sub J one. Um, and uh, according to this, we start building the first uh, tree of the hierarchy. So in, in the first uh, tree, uh, we have to consider all the rules, but only limiting the rules to the first column, which contains the values uh, R, J, R sub J1. <coughs> and uh, once you, you uh, take only one column, so you, you are splitting the, the, the rule, uh, the classifier, and uh, taking only one column, you, have in, you are in the same situation as we have seen before, okay? when uh, we are in the same uh, situation as for IP address lookup. 
so we already know how to build the tree, basically. And uh, for instance, when you have uh, um, entries, prefixes that are uh, in, uh, in this column, they correspond to gray nodes in this first try. Okay. Uh, for example, here you have uh, the first gray node, the second, the third. The only difference between uh, the IP address lookup case is that uh, when we are taking a, a column of the classifier, maybe that we will find in the column the same entry multiple times because the same entry for the first field is associated to en different entries in the other fields. Okay, so but uh, some rules may have a common entry in the first field. So when we have the same entry, of course, we the, the, all the entries that are the same map on the same uh, gray node. Then we have to consider the other fields. So for example, we take the second field and uh, um, <coughs> we have to uh, start building uh, sub tries for the second field. So other tr other trees for the second field. How many trees we need for the second field? Um, each time we have a gray node here in the first field, then we need to instantiate a, a second uh, uh, a second tree. Um, and uh, connect this second tree to this uh, specific gray node. Okay. So when uh, we, are, we are building, for example, this uh, second tree, uh, the first uh, tree of the second field on, on the right, you can see that here we have different values for the second field, but the same value for the first field. So in this uh, tree, we have to put all the rules which have the same value in the first field. And this is why this entire tree will be connected to this gray node here. Then we have another gray node in the first uh, tree, F1, in tree F1. We have to instantiate another tree F2. Okay. In this other tree F2, we will uh, represent all the rules which have in common the fact that the first field is equal to this specific regular expression, P2, and so on and so forth. Okay. So in case we have only two fields, we will have a main tree here and a set of, uh, that is the higher in the hierarchy, and then a set of uh, trees in the second level. Okay. That's the second level of the hierarchy. If we have more dimensions, we have to recurse uh, this operation. So we will have a third forest of uh, trees that is uh, uh, characterized, and each tree is characterized by the fact that uh, the first field is equal to P1, the second field is equal to a specific value that is here. For example, in this case, if we have another field, we have to take F2, the first uh, uh, tree of F2, and here we will see that we have two gray nodes. So we will need to instantiate two different trees of F, F3. The first one will have all the rules uh, with uh, uh, F2 equal to P5 and F1 equal to P, P1. The second one will have all the rules with F2 if equal to P4, F2, F1 equal to P1, okay, and so on and so forth. So this is the hierarchy, and uh, <clears throat> then we have to connect the trees uh, with these uh, uh, pointers so that uh, we know that this specific tree is connected to this gray node, this other is connected to this, and so on and so forth. Once we have prepared all these uh, big data structure, how uh, do we have to perform the lookup operations? Uh, we have to follow the hierarchy. So we start, for example, for uh, with an incoming packet. The incoming packet will have uh, D fields in the header. Uh, we start looking at the first field, okay, F1, 
using this first field, we find a path into the first tree, which is the F1 tree. Okay? This path may cross uh, different uh, gray nodes. It will end to a certain gray node. In this gray node, we have to start, from this gray node, we have to start searching into the second layer. So looking at uh, the second value of the, or the second field, okay, F2. Since we started from this gray node, we have to look into this specific tree. And we have another value in the, uh, in the header, another field. On the basis of this other field, we find a path into this other tree. Okay. This path will lead to some gray nodes. So for a, when we, we hit the final gray node, we start in looking into the second the third field, and so we will move into this F3. Okay. But since we are using tries, when we are going down, so we are uh, looking uh, down in this uh, depth first uh, search, um, if we find the final result, that is the final gray node that we hit, then that is the result. But if we don't find anything, as you know, we have to do backtracking. Okay? But in this case, backtracking will be multi-layer or multi-dimensional backtracking. So if we are, for example, in this uh, tree here and we don't find uh, any final gray node, we have to backtrack. Where we backtrack? We backtrack to the parent tree that we have visited before going into this tree. Maybe here we have to backtrack again. We go to the parent tree again. Here we go backtrack into the first uh, tree. Uh, let's say that backtracking we have to visit also this, uh, this field here. So we start moving down and so on and so forth. Uh, once we have uh, uh, taken all the fields of the packet and we have all, all we have visited uh, the trees and we have also uh, adopted all the backtracking uh, um, uh, <coughs> events that we need to adopt, finally we have a long path in the multidimensional tree. We have a multidimensional path in the multidimensional hierarchy. Um, here we are not in the case where we can apply, apply the longest prefix matching rule. So actually we have to take into account uh, all the gray nodes that have been visited due in, along this path. And then we have to compare them on the basis of the priority. Uh, it, it is not uh, uh, as in the IP lookup uh, case that uh, the preferred or the winning gray nodes are the ones that are lower in the high, in the um, three levels. Uh, we don't know a priori, so we have to save all the results of the matching gray nodes and then compares, compare them according to the priority. Uh, the priority with the highest uh, gray, uh, with the, the, the gray node with the highest priority is the one that is winning. Okay. So this is a, a, a very general uh, <coughs> um, say indication or about the criteria uh, of how we can uh, uh, build uh, this uh, uh, architecture and perform the lookup operation. <coughs> now we get uh, into the more specific case. And obviously, since we are uh, human beings and uh, the, the uh, the piece of paper or the screen is limited, we will consider only the case with two fields, okay, which is the minimum. Uh, but uh, uh, if you are considering three fields, uh, it starts getting very complicated. So let us focus on this example where we have uh, F1 and F2. These are the two fields. This is the set of rules. They are already sorted in uh, order of priority. So we start with the highest priority, which is R1, and we are going towards R7, which is the lowest priority. And as you see, we have a, a regular expression for each field and for each entry. 
and the regular expression is in the format of a prefix. Okay. So we have to focus only on the first uh, field F1 and we start building the tree. Uh, here we will use these uh, ellipses for the nodes of the tree of F1 in order to differentiate them from the nodes of the fields of the other of, of F2. And uh, this is also the highest uh, uh, um, level of the hierarchy of tries. So this is the first try. And uh, here you, we have uh, uh, these rules. Uh, for example, uh, 0, 0 uh, is repeated twice for rule R, uh, R1 and R2. So this is a gray node, and we write uh, on the, on the side, we write R1, R2, because uh, the, the same uh, uh, regular expression is shared by these two rules. Then here we have R3, is uh, 1, 0. This node, which is 0, is shared by R4, 5, and 6. So we write all of them here. And then we have R7, which is in the root. Okay. So it's exactly the same as in the case of IP address lookup with a monodimensional try, except for the fact that here we have uh, rules that can repeat themselves. So we have to write all the rules uh, in a gray node, which is uh, shared by more rules. OK, so this is the first step. Second step. Now. In, in the, as a result of the first uh, tree construction, we had one, two, three, and four gray nodes. Okay, C was a white node, so it, it's, uh, it's not uh, the gray nodes are not uh, painted as gray, but they are they are four four gray node and one one white node. So we know that we have to instantiate a tree in the second uh, level of the hierarchy for each gray node that has been identified in the first tree. Okay. So we need a tree here for D, a tree for B, a tree for A, and a tree for E. So let's start from uh, the tree from D. What we have to represent in this uh, tree that is rooted uh, at this node, and this node is connected by a pointer to the original gray node. Uh, notice that now the nodes are circles, so that we can differentiate them from the previous tree. We have here we have to represent all the rules which share the same value on the F1. So in this case we have uh, already written here uh, which are those rules, R1 and R2. So we have to create a tree only taking the second. Uh, uh, the second column, but limited to the sub-column that is uh, corresponding to R1 and R2. Okay, So the, the two rules that share 0, 0 uh, are taken uh, from the other rules, and we build the, the secondary tree only on the basis of these two values. And here, in fact, you see that we have uh, one star, that is here, and one one star that is here. Now, one star is uh, corresponding to rule number two, R2. So here we write R2. Basically, we are mapping what we have written here in the first tree, in a general term, to a specific uh, node in the second tree. And then the second is uh, R1, which is uh, mapped down here, is the one one. Okay. So this is uh, the second tree. Then we move to the other gray node, which is here. Uh, sorry, we move to the far left, uh, right, which is uh, down here. Here we have R3. Uh, in this case, uh, R3 uh, is uh, just uh, one rule. So uh, there is only one rule uh, corresponding to this gray node, E. One is a one zero star. And uh, this rule in the second field has uh, uh, one star. So this, the tree that is representing this rule is this one. Okay. 
and uh, here we map R3. Then uh, we go to B, okay, node B. Node B is uh, zero star as a gray node in the first tree. It uh, collects uh, three rules, four, five, and six. We have to build this secondary tree in the, for the second field, considering the values of F2, 4, 4, 5, and 6. So 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. And this is the resulting value. So now we have uh, R6 located here, R7, R5 that is uh, here, and R4 here. Okay. Finally, we have uh, the last gray node that was the root. And here we have again uh, just one rule uh, with the star in the fir first field, F1, but 0, 0 in the second. So it will uh, correspond to this tree and it will be mapped to this gray node. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the try hierarchy that we can use now to perform uh, IP address lookup. Uh, sorry, packet classification. So now this is an incoming packet. Uh, the field one has uh, is uh, zero zero one and then some other bits. Field two is one one zero and then other bits. Uh, so we extract these uh, thirty two bit numbers and we start matching them uh, with a, a hierarchical uh, try. Uh, so we have to consider first uh, F1, okay? So F1 is uh, uh, zero, in this case, the first three bits are zero, zero, 001. So it will define a path in the first uh, tree. Uh, actually, here we have only zero, zero, and then we have to stop. There are no more um, <coughs> nodes uh, down this uh, branch of the tree. Um, and uh, uh, we notice that we have crossed uh, this uh, uh, gray node A, the gray, gray node B, and gray node D. We have to take note of all the gray nodes that uh, have been crossed for the backtracking operations. Oops. And uh, this is the first uh, path uh, in uh, F1. Now, the last uh, three the, la the last node we have uh, visited is uh, D. Okay, we did, didn't, uh, we cannot, could not go any further than D. So we start from D, looking into F2, and uh, D is connected to this try in uh, uh, the F2 level of the hierarchy. So we start uh, moving inside this try using the second value of the field. The, the second, the, the value of the second field of the incoming packet. In this case, is one one zero. So we go down one one, and then we have to stop. And uh, uh, we take note that we we crossed uh, the gray node R two and the gray node R uh, one. Okay. We have to do backtracking because. Now we have finished uh, the visitation of this uh, secondary uh, tree. Now we backtrack. Big track means uh, in this case that we go back to the gray node in the first field where we started from. This is the second the, the path in the second field. Uh, so we, we go back to the uh, to the gray node where we started from. In this case, is D, and we now with D, the work, the job is finished. We have to backtrack to the ancestor gray node in the first tree, which is in this case B. Now from B, we start looking into F2 again. So we take uh, the again the value of F2 of the received packet, and we start searching into this tree. Okay. This is a uh, one one zero. So in this this uh, second tree, we can only move until this gray node R six, and then we have finished. So again, we do backtracking. We go back to B, 
and then we go to the ancestor the, the, the ancestor gray node uh, in the uh, first tree and then we have to perform the final lookup operation so in this case uh, uh, we have to look up into this tree here zero but uh, this tree is only zero zero if you take the value of the second field which is one one you cannot go anywhere in this tree okay so now we have finished uh, our path in the multidimensional hierarchical tree uh, because uh, uh, we have reached the root so we cannot go anywhere else and uh, uh, the final result is uh, uh, that we visited r2 r1 r6 and that's all what is the highest priority um, rule that is uh, uh, in this list the highest priority rule is r1 okay so r1 will be the final result of our packet classification in this case this is also the rule which which is uh, lower in the in the tree but it is not uh, uh, this is not uh, absolutely necessary uh, because it depends on uh, uh, the, the priority which is assigned to each specific rule. So the backtracking process is necessary because uh, 001 of the incoming packet matches uh, several prefixes in the first field and we have no knowledge in advance which is uh, the F23 that contains the winning prefix so the prefix that is matching also the second uh, the second uh, field and it is also the highest priority one uh, so at, at the end we have to complete the path by backtracking each time and uh, we have to list all the rules uh, match uh, crossed in the, in the path uh, and uh, take the highest priority one uh, you can see that uh, we have basically we have to take note of the rules once we are in the lowest uh, uh, level of hierarchy of the tries so here in this case we have only two fields so the the specific uh, uh, rules that are matched at the end are found only in the um, in the um, uh, nodes the gray nodes in trees of f2 okay if you have uh, three rules, uh, if you have uh, three fields, then you will find specific nodes in the fields, uh, in the in the trees of F3 and so on. Okay. You have to take note of uh, the gray nodes uh, that are crossed in uh, uh, the tree F1 only for the backtracking operation, but not as uh, final results. This is another example. Uh, here we have an incoming packet with uh, F1, which is uh, 010, F2 is 001. We start again in the first uh, uh, field, in the first um, tree of the first field. <coughs> 010 means that uh, the only path that is possible here is uh, from A to B. So we crossed A and B. And then we cannot go any further because we don't have uh, a one here. And uh, so the last node visited was B. So we start the search in uh, level two from uh, here. The tree that is connected to B is this one. So using F2, we move into this second tree. And uh, F2 is a zero, zero, 001. So we can only go to this node, white node zero. And then uh, we cannot uh, go any, fur any further, so we have to backtrack. We backtrack to B, and then from B we backtrack to the ancestor, which is A, and we start looking into the F23, which is connected to A. And uh, here we have uh, 001, and the tree is this one. So we go down and we find R7. Then the path is uh, complete because uh, uh, we have already backtracked to the root of the first tree, so we cannot go any further. And so the final result in this case will be R7. Okay.
In terms of performance, uh, here we have uh, uh, an n rule set. Uh, so the number of entries is n, the number of fields is d, and since we here we are considering entries that are expressed in the form of uh, the prefix, uh, we, we, we take uh, the longest of all these prefixes and uh, the length is uh, w. And uh, so what is uh, the storage complexity? Uh, the storage complexity is uh, uh, big O of n d w. Uh, so here we have you find basically the same storage complexity as the binary tree n by w, but is multiplied by d because we have these uh, d levels. Uh, this is really not uh, so much because you just are uh, multiplying. Uh, the unidimensional case uh, by D and uh, uh, this means that you are avoiding what happens in other techniques that it's the exponential growth in terms in uh, as a function of the number of dimensions however the, the searching time is not uh, so nice uh, in fact it is uh, W uh, by power uh, at the power of D and this is because uh, um, you have to go down <coughs> in a, a dimension in a, each tree of each dimension uh, in a, for a depth of w. So this would take uh, the big O of w searching time, which is the same as uh, we have seen in the unidimensional tree. Um, then you have uh, uh, ft minus one trees that we assume to have in the uh, uh, worst case each one a uh, depth of w and uh, you have to perform <coughs> for each of them uh, a search that is uh, similar so for example in the uh, case of uh, uh, two dimensions uh, you have a, a search in the first uh, um, three and then once you find each time you, you find a, a, a gray node, you have to go to the, do a search in the second tree. And if you assume that the gray nodes that you find are uh, W, then it means that uh, the complexity in all is uh, uh, O by W square. And then uh, um, if you extend this concept to uh, D dimensions, you have this, the reason of this exponential behavior. Update complexity is uh, uh, something in between, so you, uh, it is uh, evaluated as uh, d square by w, uh, because uh, each field of the uh, update rule is stored exactly in one location, in a d level 3, the maximum depth is O uh, with the maximum depth, so the um, um, update complexity in each tree is uh, uh, dw and then you have uh, uh, d trees uh, d level trees so you have uh, finally d square w complexity so this is basically the the basic hierarchical tri structure uh, if you are looking in the book uh, you will find that uh, these two values are wrong but uh, so refer to the to the slides uh, uh, for the storage complexity and the at day complexity. Uh, now, as we did in uh, the case of uh, unidimensional tree, we can uh, make something to decrease the complexity of uh, this data structure, and uh, in, uh, well, actually. Uh, since here the worst uh, uh, parameter is uh, lookup performance, we can do something to decrease the complexity of the, of the lookup operation more than uh, uh, the size of the data structure. And uh, the first uh, uh, improvement is called uh, set pruning uh, tri data structure. And uh, we, by set, set pruning, uh, is set pruning has a similar effect as uh, the um, 
this joint prefix technique that we have seen in a one dimension. The effect is to avoid some of the backtrackings. And uh, what can we do in order to avoid backtracking? We can basically take all the trees in the second level and uh, consider the trees in the, in the, the gray nodes in the, in the first level where, where these trees are uh, connected to and uh, start uh, replicating branches, the, the branches of uh, the trees at the second level uh, on each other. So we start copying uh, the information that we have uh, in uh, uh, the higher, uh, the, the, the trees that are connected to the um, topmost uh, uh, nodes in the first uh, uh, in F1 to the other trees that we have in F2. And uh, to be more specific, uh, we have to take uh, uh, a node here. Uh, let's say uh, here, this is uh, uh, basically uh, this, the set of gray nodes that we have uh, in uh, um, the first three. So R7, A, B, D, and E. So we take the topmost of this gray node and we start copying its connected uh, tree in the second level to the, tree, the trees uh, of uh, uh, its children in the, second, in the first level. <coughs> um, so each tray node with a, 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 a valid prefix duplicates all the rules in the rule set of its ancestors and into its own, uh, into its own rule set. So let's take uh, uh, this tree, that is the first one, 0, 0, is connected to R7. Uh, the children of uh, A are B and C, so we have to, co to copy this tree onto the trees of C, that is connected, sorry, uh, the, the children are A and C, B and C, okay, but C is a, a white node. Uh, so we will have to consider E on this side. And here we have to consider B. So we take this, this uh, 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 tree and uh, we copy it on uh, the tree of E. So in this case, the tree of E originally was this one. We copy the tree of A and uh, this is the result. Then, uh, uh, again, we take the tree of A and we copy it into the, uh, the tree of uh, connected to B. Okay. This was the original tree connected to B. And uh, this is the result after we do this copying. And then uh, we take the tree of B and we copy it into the, onto the tree that was connected to D. This was the original uh, uh, tree of, of D, and this is what we obtain when we copy what we have here. Each time we copy to the uh, children, uh, the, the children tree, so that uh, each gray node uh, in the first field is attached to the tree which connects, uh, which, which collects also the information of uh, its ancestors. Uh, so now we, once we have copied all the trees, we have to identify the gray nodes in these bottom trees. So if we start from here, we have uh, from uh, node B. Okay, here we have. Uh, uh, rule 4, 5, 6, and 7. Um, this is a rule 4, rule 5, rule 6, and rule 7. Okay? Rule 7 comes from uh, the, uh, the ancestor. The other ones were originally already here. And then uh, we go on. Okay, this is just an example, then you can uh, uh, in, go down here 
and uh, here uh, rule uh, seven rule three was already there rule seven uh, is on this node and finally here you have uh, uh, rule one that was already there here rule two that was uh, already there and uh, the other rules are um, inherited by from uh, node b so you have uh, rule four that goes here rule seven goes here rule six goes here and rule five that goes here Um, what is uh, the final advantage of all these uh, mechanisms is that you avoid backtracking. Like for example, when uh, we have uh, uh, the same, uh, we take the same packet as before, zero zero one one zero zero, then we go down here with uh, the first field, we arrive in D, and then we go down here in D, and uh, Using the second field 110, we start moving inside this tree. We have to uh, rule one, which is uh, the final, the final result. Uh, we also encounter rule six and rule two, but they are with lower priority. And this is another example that is the same as we have seen before. Uh, going down here, we find rule four. Why you don't need to backtrack? Because when you are visiting this tree, you have all the informations regarding uh, F2 that you already you had in the other trees. Okay, so just visit one tree and you find everything there. Okay. Now we can stop here and so next week we will go on with uh, uh, these uh, packet classifications uh, and then uh, we will see what happens in the next. Okay. <clears throat>